Run right up your engine! This baby started out as a 1999 GS400. You can see on the outside, it's kind of odd. It's got a black matte finish. Guy paid 400 bucks to have it painted. And look, it's supercharged. Well, it says it's supercharged, but it isn't. <laughs> That's just a sticker. There's no supercharger on this thing. I look. No, yeah, they were fast little cars. I see one they were new. And this one says TRD, Toyota Racing Development. But that's fake too. No, this baby's got 200,000 plus miles on it. It's showing its age. You can see the leather seats all torn up. It was once a very luxurious car. We'll unlock the doors. Check out the. <laughs> well, that doesn't work anymore either. <laughs> We'll have to manually open the door. Got a reasonable amount of space inside. And it is the classic rear wheel drive. There's the differential. Rear wheel drive, giant racing tires. And we check on the hood. Big old V8 engine. And here you can see guys have done modifications. They put in a cold air intake on it. Some fancier electronics for burglar alarms. And upgrading it to LED lights because it didn't come with LED lights. The main thing is it's got this big old V8 engine. They're strong and powerful engines, but as they age, they're very expensive to repair. And being an old one, it's got variable valve timing, but it has a rubber timing belt inside there. And it is an interference engine. If that belt breaks for any reason, pistons are going to the valves goodbye engine a lot of expensive preventive maintenance you need to do on a car like this but the main thing about this is it's got aftermarket modifications that probably were not done all that well let's start her up and check things out you can hear the exhaust is way too loud He's never gonna pass any state inspection. It's too loud, as you can see. Doesn't have a sticker on it. But it's often a lot worse than that. I got my scan tool hooked up. We're gonna look at the data. You can see it's got a lot of problems. The engine has eight fault coats. ABS and traction have 19 fault coats. You start modifying these things incorrectly, you're gonna have problems. The ABS track, now yeah, you can live without that stuff. But the engine, let's take a look at it. Here we go, it's a bunch of catalytic converter ones. Throttle control, motor circuit. A whole bunch of cat problems and a problem with the throttle motor. Well, the cats are simple. This car doesn't have any. Got them all taken off. There's no cats on this vehicle. It's one of the reasons it's so loud. It can never pass inspection legally without catalytic converters. And since this is a feedback system, that affects how the vehicle runs. Odds are it's never going to run perfectly anymore with all these crazy modifications that people have done to the car. But for a serious analysis, we'll start her back up and we'll look at the live data. Live data. You can see the exhaust gas analyzer. They take the EGR valve off. The oxygen sensors aren't available because all that was taken off with the catalytic converters. Now with all these modifications, you can see the long-term fuel trim, minus 20 on both bank one and bank two. That means the car's running rich. It has to subtract fuel, but of course it does that measuring with the oxygen sensor system, which has been disconnected from this car. So this is a madman's car to attempt to decipher what's wrong because the computer is missing most of its feedback data and it's just going to be guessing. Let's check out the AC. We'll put it as cold as it goes. Does it still work? We'll find out in a second. No, it doesn't work. It's still blowing hot air at me, but watch this. It doesn't matter what I put the fan speed on, it stays full blast the whole time. So this whole system's messed up too. But on the other hand, showing how well built these things are made, look. All the cylinders, zero misfires. It actually runs pretty good, considering half the stuff isn't even hooked up anymore. And then it's got 245,000 miles on it. There's no arguing that these things were solid built. For somebody to screw around with this car, put these crazy add-ons, and it still runs fine. Now, you can't get it inspected. The check engine light's on. The traction control system's broken down. Now, if you lived in a state where they do no emissions testing, no inspections, yeah, you could drive it around. Look how it still runs. Still rides in corners quite well. It's got the fancy suspension, but man, it is loud. And when you step on the gas, got a little hesitation there. It has lost quite a bit of its power. And when it tries to shift, shifting's really rough for a Lexus. But I mean, with all this mileage, things are just gonna flat wear out. And when you put it in park, you can see it's idling way too high. 
And that is a combination of what they've done under the hood. You put these aftermarket cold air intakes and aftermarket sensors. And remove the catalytic converters and the oxygen sensors that are on the converters that see how rich or lean the car is running. This car is running on a computer that's just doing educated guesswork. I'm amazed truthfully that it actually even runs. Now if somebody wanted to fix it correctly and put the correct Lexus catalytic converters, go back to the old air box with the original mass airflow sensor and reset everything, it probably would run pretty good. But that's not going to be cheap. A car with a quarter of a million miles, I don't think it's worth throwing that kind of money into it myself. Now this baby originally put out 300 horsepower back in 1998 with a conventional engine. It may say it's supercharged, but there's no supercharger on this. I put this thing on a dyno, it was putting out 135 horsepower. It's the way it's set up, I'm amazed it even put that. Out. Plus the transmission is going out, it's got a $400 paint job. Personally I wouldn't put the money into this car the way it sits now. Because for that amount of money here in Houston I could buy the same car maybe 120,000 miles, less than half and everything on it would still be working. <laughs> the AC, this AC doesn't work, it would be shifting okay. I would not put that into an old thing like this. It's not worth throwing the money in. Now yeah they are well built cars. But I looked inside with my borescope, I can see that it looks like it's still the original timing belt with all those miles. Which shows how well Toyota makes these things. That it can have all that mileage on with the original timing belt. But one day the timing belt's going to break, then it's goodbye engine. You want to change the timing belt on one this old, you got to change everything. The water pump, the timing belt, the pulley, the tensioner pulley. By the time you're done, eh, you're over $1,000, dollars It's just worth putting into this thing. There's a time with every car, including Lexus, that you realize, well, enough is enough. It went a quarter of a million miles. People did modifications on it. It's just time to say goodbye. Because even with my 52 years of experience, to really understand this car, you would have to put on the four catalytic converters back on, you'd have to put the oxygen sensors back on, put a timing belt on it, and start analyzing it. You really want to spend thousands of dollars just to analyze it? You might still say, oh well, a lot of other stuff's wrong. The AC might cost a couple grand to fix. There comes a point when an old car has got too many problems with it to throw good money after bad. But as I said, hey, if you lived in a place where they don't do any inspections, you could put the oxygen sensors back on, then it would at least get feedback and be able to understand what's going on better. Get rid of that stupid cold air intake and put a factory one on, you go to a junkyard, get a used one, and hey, it might run halfway decent then, and you could use it as a toy. But in any place like Houston where you gotta pass the emission standard every year, this baby's never gonna pass that without thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of work. Now you know the truth about used luxury sporty cars. Sometimes even a Lexus is too far gone to throw your hard earned money into. Say for example, if they were bringing me this car to check it out purchase. I tell him don't ever buy that thing. <laughs> he's had it for years so he's already driven it around some but it's at the point of no return now as far as I'm concerned. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Fast Daddy 76 says got 2013 Mazda 6. Sometimes it takes too long to start it when I crank it. It doesn't have any codes, the check engine light is not on, but it always starts when I make wide open throttle, when I step it on the floor. Here's what happens when you have wide open throttle. Wide open throttle, when you floor it, that is the how to on flood an engine. You get a car that's flooding out from the fuel, too much fuel in the cylinders, and you try to start it, you give it wide open throttle because that's the on flood to make it start even though it's kind of flooded out. So if your engine is flooding out, as they age, that thing's what? How old is it? It's eight years old. The ignition coils tend to get weak when they're cold and they don't spark. So while you're cranking the engine, the injectors are spraying fuel in, but the spark plugs aren't sparking right. Change all the four coils. I did that on one a couple months ago, fixed the problem entirely. It's obviously flooding it out because when you floor it, it starts. So on that model, it's often bad ignition coils. So buy some ignition coils. You can go to AutoZone. They're not all that bad. Put them on. Probably fix your problem. If it does, you can thank Scotty. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.